when I put against us out in 2014, um, the size of my fan base wasn't even half the size of my fan base right now. So I wanted to reintroduce the song. I felt like the song was still dope. It's still a fan favorite. Any any concert I do, I, I gotta do against us. Fans love it. But I wanted to bring some new energy to it. I'm big on um, collaborating with my friends in this industry. Uh, there's a select few people that I consider real friends. Even, you know, whether we're doing music or not, I consider them to be friends. Lupe Fiasco is definitely a friend. Um, he's like a big brother, honestly. Um, big Crit, definitely a friend, you know? Um, and I was like, instead of trying to reach out to them to do some different stuff, if we all get on the same track, oh man, that'd be powerful, you know? Because mm -hmm. we, all, we all try to push the culture forward, you know, with our music. We all, we all speak from a different perspective, but we're trying to push people in a more positive direction, all of us. In the streets is going down, Titanic, God got me up, why panic? Who cares if you die rich if you ain't dynamic? So why not get us on a track where when I say against us, the us is all three of us, you know what I mean? I met, I first met Lupe um, on a flight coming to New York. We were leaving New Orleans, coming to New York. He was in first class, I was in coach, you know what I mean? Um, but uh, when I walked past him, in my head, it's like, man, that's Lupe. That's one of my favorite rappers, you know? So this was probably like 2012. And I just reached out and dapped him off on the plane and told him who I was. And, you know, we didn't really speak on the plane, but when we landed in New York, uh, saw him at baggage claim and we struck up a conversation and I was like, oh, this dude, he, he's real, you know, he's just a real dude and I felt comfortable with him instantly. Uh, that spawned off a friendship. Next thing that really solidified me and Lou's friendship is he came back to New Orleans to perform at Xavier University and you know Mia X from No Limit? Mm -hmm. Mia X is a, a, a world famous chef now, man. She is an amazing chef. Mm -hmm. and she cooked dinner for me and Lupe when he came in town. And we were gonna go to her restaurant and eat it, but she had to skip out of town last second. So she just made the food and came and brought it to me at my crib. And Lupe was like, oh, well sure, I'll just come to your crib and eat it, you know? So Lupe came to my, came to my crib, you know what I mean? In my head, I'm like, this is crazy, you know, Lupe, cause I'm not that cool with him at the time, man. But. Lupe came to the crib, bro. Once you come to the crib, you fam, you know what I mean? Big Crit, I met Crit at Tree Sound Studios um, in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, so shout out to Miley and Groove and everybody at Tree Sound. We were both in there working. I was rocking with uh, Grand Hustle at the time. Jason Jeter was managing me and Crit was in there recording one of his projects. And, um, and when we met, same thing, I'm like, man, it's a, this dude from right next door to my crib, you know? He from Mississippi, I'm from Louisiana, like right next door to one another. I go up to him and holler at him, and, and he knew who I was. He was like, man, I'm definitely hip. He was like, boy, I'll be banging that, uh, that One Man Army. You know, that was, my, that was my song I had at the time, One Man Army and J-15 and Wheezy. And we kind of just stayed cool since then, keep in touch, you know what I mean? Run into him at different events. It's just the energy, the energy matches, you know? The energy matches um, to where it never feels like it's a forced relationship, you know. So, um, and I never asked to do music before either, you know. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something where it's like, oh, this dude with D1 asking me to do a song every six months with him, you know. Never asked him to do nothing before. So when I reached out, he knew it was legit. And then he heard Lupe was on the track too, so he knew it was extra legit. And Crick came and topped that mug off. My grandpa on the song too. Oh yeah? My grandpa just made 86, I throw him on the track. He uh, he did the intro, you know. After I had me, Crit, and Lupe, I'm like, man, it's an all-star combination, but it's missing something. I said, the intro, like, what can I do on the intro? Do I need a DJ Cali intro? Like, what's the, what am I gonna do to just bring this song in the right way? I was talking on the intro, didn't feel right. I tried to have my homeboy talking, didn't feel right. I said, man, I'm gonna get Papa to do this, you know. I said, yeah, I'm gonna try this. I put him on the intro, one take, man, perfect. You know what I'm saying? He said, hi, right, this is the music of D1, who just so happens to be my grandson, along with Lupe Fiasco and Big Crit. Let's go. <laughs> and it just, it feels so authentic though, man. And he got the perfect type of voice. That was unscripted, unscripted, you know what I mean? One take. Um, 
felt great. And then I said, you know what? I got to throw him on the outro, too. So he's spitting a couple bars on the outro. So yeah, when you hear it, listen to the outro, yeah. I might be 86, but I know good hip-hop when it hits. And you know what I represent. Be real, be righteous, and be relevant. Ah!